So it turns out that mathematics is a very powerful language. It has generated considerable insight in physics, in biology, and in economics. But not that much in the humanities and in history. I think there's the belief that it's just impossible, that you cannot quantify the doings of mankind, that you cannot measure history. But I don't think that's right. I want to show you a couple of examples why. So my collaborator, Erez, and I were considering the following fact, that two kings separated by centuries will speak a very different language. That's a powerful historical force. So the king of England, Alfred the Great, will use a vocabulary and a grammar that is quite different from the king of hip-hop, Jay-Z. <laughs> now, it's just the way it is. Language changes over time, and it's a powerful force. So Erez and I wanted to know more about that. So we paid attention to a particular grammatical rule, past tense conjugation. So you just add ed to a verb at the end to signify the past. Today I walk, yesterday I walked. But some verbs are irregular. Yesterday I thought. Well, now, what's interesting about that is irregular verbs between Alfred and Jay-Z have become more regular, like the verb to wed that you see here has become regular. So Erez and I followed the fate of over 100 irregular verbs through 12 centuries of English language. And we saw that there's actually a very simple mathematical pattern that captures this complex historical change. Namely, if a verb is 100 times more frequent than another, it regularizes 10 times slower. That's a piece of history, but it comes in a mathematical wrapping. Now, in some cases, math can even help explain or propose explanations for historical forces. So here, Steve Pinker and I were considering the magnitude of wars during the last two centuries. There's actually a well-known regularity to them, where the number of wars that are 100 times deadlier is 10 times smaller. So there are 30 wars that are about as deadly as the Six Days War. But there's only four wars that are 100 times deadlier, like World War I. So what kind of historical mechanism can produce that? What's the origin of this? So Steve and I, through mathematical analysis, uh, propose that there's actually a very simple uh, phenomena at the root of this, which, is, which lies in our brains. This is a very well-known feature which we perceive quantities in relative ways, the quantities like the intensity of light or the loudness of a sound. For instance, committing 10,000 soldiers to the next battle sounds like a lot, it's relatively enormous if you've already committed 1,000 soldiers previously. But it doesn't sound so much, it's not relatively enough. It won't make a difference if you've already committed 100,000 soldiers previously. So you see that because of the way we perceive quantities, as the war drags on, the number of soldiers committed to it and the casualties will increase not linearly, like 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, but exponentially, 10,000, later 20,000, later 40,000. And so that explains this pattern that we've seen before. So here, mathematics is able to link a well-known feature of the individual mind with a long-term pattern, a historical pattern that unfolds over centuries.